Prepare yourself for a sprawling discussion on just about anything, where critical thinking meets pop culture in a collision of mind-bending proportions. Please secure all neurons and prepare for full frontal cortex. It's time for Incoherent Ramblings. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Incoherent Ramblings, Ramble 009999. Yes, we've made it to number nine, and today it's going to be all about faster than light travel kale especially wanted to do this because he likes his faster than light travel don't you kale i like it fast he likes it fast and he likes it light and i like to travel <laughs> i like ftl early morning delivery next day <laughs> oh it's that's funny because ftl is the abbreviation for faster than light <laughs> you're brilliant Carol. what do you think about it booger I try not to think about FTL. It gives me gas. Oh, uh, yes, of course it does. <laughs> so uh, we kind of had an introduction, but I'm Joey Shamel. We've also got Daryl Jores and Kale Anderson and the remote guy. And, of course, me, Robert Booger Magallanes. Today's episode is brought to you by Blaster from Fall of Cybertron. Yes, Blaster. He talks like this. Hey, man, what's going on? I'm Blaster. <laughs> All right. All right. I don't remember him saying yeah. Nah, and I added that. So faster right. than light travel well, this is, is our top. Yeah, that's not a good idea. Yeah. Having my drink by the <laughs> mixer. <laughs> It'll board. be the world's shortest episode. <laughs> so we're gonna talk. We're, we're trying to make our podcast a little bit more uh, specific because we have hit such broad things in the past. We want to try and keep it a little bit. You know, so we don't so, well, kind of peter this out. This is our little experiment to see if it works. Yeah. So here we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead of saying space travel or something like that or space right. exploration, we're just like, let's we're, talk we're about going... faster than light speed. Right. Keep it simple. So, and for those of you who don't know, the idea of faster than light speed is uh, something that may not even be possible. Well, at least not conventionally. And that's something we're going to talk about. Uh, for those of you who may be wondering about space and if there's any life out there, if anybody is living in one of the stars, they, of course, are millions and millions of miles away. And the only way we'll ever really get to another solar system or planet outside of our own, is by light speed, faster than light speed travel. Unless we do, like, generation ships. Exactly. But up that uh, by several order of magnitude, it would be, like, millions of millions of miles away. Millions yeah. and millions of millions of millions miles, Millions yes. of millions, yeah. Millions of Although millions, Although, yeah. we keep Billion. finding <laughs> Earth one planets so yeah. quickly now with, uh, with the new uh, telescopes we're using, might be closer than we think. True. Yeah, didn't they just find uh, an Earth planet... Uh, 12, 12 light years away. Yeah, and it was, but it was like huge. It was, around, it was really uh, big. It was around a dwarf. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, a white dwarf. White dwarf. Yeah. You know, I just realized anything I want to know about, I can bring up and it will be in the show notes later because <laughs> someone will look it up. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of nice that we get validated. I by... mean, there's no way that we can not see what's going to happen next when we try. You know, when we, when we want to mention something. Right? Right. I mean, whatever we say is going to happen, and it's not like we're not, you know, it's, it's not something, huh? you, get, you get me? Do we have precognition? Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, you'll, you'll get it later, and you will be floored. You'll yeah. think it's so hilarious. I'll look at the show notes and go, oh my God, that was funny. Yes, what I just said was actually hilarious. <laughs> Did, but nobody, I, apparently, okay. I, I know literally there's going to be a cell <laughs> on the show notes that says... <laughs> This was actually hilarious. <laughs> but we can't tell you why even in but the show not. notes. In the show notes, we can't even tell you yeah, why. That's fine. Because we right. promise not to. All right, so faster than light travel. Let's start off with um, the idea, first of all, that light travel is apparently not possible because if Einstein showed that if we get closer to the speed of light, we actually get really massive and not in a good way. And we also... Uh, get thinner and time slows down to nothing. But there's a ways to get... Apparently get around that, right, Kale? Well, the... Thank you, Daryl. Go ahead, Daryl. No, no, no. Well, I was just going <laughs> to... Yes, Daryl. Specify what you're talking about. A, yeah, a mass good. thing is that you approach infinite mass as you reach the speed of light. So if you were going the speed of light, the theory says you would be infinitely massive, which would take infinite power to drive. Now yeah, it's Kale's yeah. It works out actually really well because you will not only be infinitely massive, need infinite power, but you will be kind of an infinite time because time stops. So how do you move? Oh, it's so true. confusing. Yeah. That's why the the way people are trying to get around that is they're not trying to break the law that seems to be break there, the law, the which is 
uh, breaking the law, breaking the law, of, breaking, of the law breaking the law, is that uh, they they find ways to They're get around it, like warp speed or with wormholes or the less likely hyperspace. So, so why don't we start speed. off with with warp speed and what that is? Because I think I mean Star Trek made it popular, but it's an actual scientific possibility, and I think they're closer now than ever to actually getting to the point. Well, they're always closer than ever because that's science. Yeah. But I mean that they're actually going to possibly, maybe sooner than we expected, have some sort of warp speed equivalent. Yeah, definitely. Um, I uh, always I it was one of the few things that. Uh, warp speed that I did not think was going to be possible. I thought it was going to be something more like wormholes, where it's going to be the most likely thing. But then I read this uh, article by a Mexican physicist. His name is Miguel. How do you pronounce it? Al Albuquer Albu Albuquerque. Albuquerque. No. No. Albuquerque. He's a tuna. <laughs> He's a tuna. He's a tuna. A L C U B I E R R. -E. Anyway, in 1994. Albuquerque. I did that. I don't know. What do you do? In 1994, he wrote an art. Uh, he did a study on it and figured out that if you there was a way that you could actually contract space around a warp bubble and then expand it behind the warp bubble, mm -hmm. and then it would tra you would travel. You wouldn't be traveling faster than light, but you would get to a destination before light would arrive. Boing. Warp bubble. Warp bubble. Really? Totally done that in the bathtub before. <laughs> Yeah. And it sounded like this. <laughs> uh, no, we did not need a sound effect. <laughs> so, Booger, can you roll your R's? Because the rest, you know, it's all white guys here. We have no... Yes, way. I can roll my R's. All right, so what's the guy's name again? Alcore? Al what, spell it? Al spell it again? <laughs> <laughs> Al Kubre. It's a new. It's a new. Al Kubre. Oh my gosh! Al -Kubre. It's like Al Kubre. Al Kubre. Al Kubre Al is a gangster fifties <laughs> singer. Hey, <laughs> Al Kubre. Anyway, he did All this right. study and he figured out that what what happened is that it, according to his math, it would be possible. But when he finished doing his math, he figured that the power to do it would be the size of <laughs> Jupiter. Got to bed on time. <laughs> what? And by, by doing his math, he met his dog, right? He did his math homework. <laughs> his math homework, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, look, yeah. we went like two different jokes with that. Got to bed exactly. on time and the anyway, dog. And, it would take yeah. the, the power the size of Jupiter to make it work. So it was... it. It looked like it might be possible, but not realistic. Not even close to realistic. Ringer of War. So what? Wait, wait, wait. So oh, is that the Mars. latest that no. they found out? What's the latest? Well, in 2012, then you had uh, Harold White, who was at NASA, and he did a study where he went back and reevaluated it and figured that if instead of a, using a uh, a circle, you use a more of a uh, torus shape that it reduces the amount of power and he also did some uh did some other uh calculations well, i want to be, just be clear do you mean like a torus with a donut hole in the middle right or, right okay okay because or the, the ford car because what what it would be is <laughs> wow, like a, sorry. a it, <laughs> That's all right. when it's contracting <laughs> space <guilty> <laughs> uh it would be like ra riding a wave so the the warp bubble would ride the wave hmm. and uh he figured that uh, by changing the shape that what you would be able to do is reduce the amount of power down to about the size of the Voyager spacecraft. So much mm. more likely to be able to do it. And he's done some other things now that make it look like it, it'll take even less power. Hmm. I wonder if this, do you know, is there anyone who's actively working on this or is this still something that's in theoretical science? As a matter of fact, uh, Harold White is- <laughs> That uh, sounded scripted, but it wasn't, I swear. <laughs> Harold White actually at NASA is doing paper a study. You should before you say something like that. <laughs> and what it's called is the White Jude. I know it sounds White Judy, right? <laughs> the White, White Judeo Jude Christian White Warp Field Interferometer. Interferometer. And so they're setting up a study of to do this with lasers to see if it's possible. But the thing is, no word so far about. The experiment. It's being set up. I don't think they've been able to make it you're work You're still yet. talking about a mass to energy conversion the size of a spacecraft that weighs how many No, tons? they're using, they're they're talking oh. like Oh, they're atoms. just starting this. That, uh, they okay, want to get to that they're point. Doing yeah, they're just scale. trying to create okay. a warp uh, uh, field right, right now. Just right. a very small right. one. Build it right. up. Like, 
I think it's uh, one to ten million. Okay. That's the difference. Do you need to keep the spoon in the cup, Booger? Like, can't you take the spoon out? Oh, was I? I didn't even hear it. I'm, I'm sorry, you did. <laughs> I didn't hear it. So Booger, don't worry okay, because I'm sure our audience at home wants to know. Booger's been sick, and so he has his tea with the spoon inside it. And well, the tea, the spoon will be removed. There is, it's been thusly removed. There, taking the spoon out of his ass. That's what he's, we like. He's popping again. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is what? So they're they're gonna hopefully. Well, I think it would be really cool if they were able to make you know the warp drive because growing up, as soon as you, I was into space so much, I loved it. And then you learn, you get to that age where you learn, oh, we can't actually go anywhere. I mean, Star Trek, Star Wars, you know, they say we can, but then you get yeah. into the science of it, and it's like, wow, we're only gonna be explore our own solar system, and there's not much. Here. I mean, it's nice, but you know. Well, you can the, go to the that. ocean in Europa. Should is oh gonna yes, be that very might interesting, have, I think. and it might have life and stuff. Actually, that's... but it won't take us uh, faster than light travel to get there. They did find the uh, proof on Mars that life could have existed. Actually, they just found out the space. Uh, what's that called? The thing that's there, the robot guy. What's the curiosity? Curiosity. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, curiosity. They just found out. I think it was yesterday that uh, there was a time in Mars. Mars, Martha, Mars's, <laughs> Mars's past where it was very similar to Earth and could have supported life. It had very salty oceans and had all the right materials for it. So it's a it's a big uh, step to our understanding of the universe. But still, there's very little chance that we're going to find you know much beyond the planets here. So the idea that we might be able to create a warp drive in our lifetime and actually travel to another solar system is to me, I mean, it's fantastic. I, I kind of put well, it out of my mind. especially fantastic when you consider that, you know, we went to the moon in 69 and haven't... Haven't done anything else yet. Yeah. done a whole lot since then. I mean, we, we do the robotic well, exploration. the cool thing stuff, is, but. is that if they get it to work, uh, uh, according to the, st the mathematics they have now, it would go 10 times, not faster, but 10 times right. faster than the speed of light. It would get that, there 10 times faster than the speed We would be able to go... Uh, Ten times the speed. I just want to go back That's to the word awesome. fantastic because there's something I, I find funny that probably no one else will. Uh, in the old day, olden time movies, like in the 30s, or well, it's a little early, 40s or 50s, when you said fantastic, it meant unbelievable. So it's really funny to watch it because when they say something, they say, they say, what you're talking about, that's fantastic. But they mean it's like unbelievable. Well, they used to right. say that uh, things were gay, too. You're gay. Yes, I am. I'm very happy you're, right now. You're gay. And Thank you. Well, they also had a different word, term for the word bully as well. Which, you know, bully. Oh, that's bully. Oh. <laughs> and I was very gay there. Yes. So let's move on. We talked about uh, warp speed. You guys want to add anything else to warp speed? <laughs> I'm well, in my shoe. How um, the, the warp itself, you're talking about warping space. Right. right. Basically just drawing space, the fabric of space time, mm -hmm. actually. Pulling it together in front of the ship and yeah. then expanding it out behind the ship. Right. And then basically all you're doing is you're just standing still moving through and space is moving space. by you. Right. Uh, you have a really cool picture of that. You yeah, showed actually. Me and I'll, it will be in the show oh, notes. Oh, put right there. Where, well, let's say under the show notes. We'll see that picture. It will show the... No, no, what will be the link? So Daryl's right. bathtub time bubble. Okay, Daryl's bathtub go. time bubble is the picture of the warp drive... Com comprehend. It's next to my plastic. There will be lots monitors. of those interesting pictures, I think. Yes, because if you're not listening to the show with the show notes, you're not listening to the show with the show notes. <laughs> notes. <laughs> <laughs> Just being. I don't of... see that coming a long way away. <laughs> this was Joey's daily tautology. Thank you, <laughs> thank, you. Yes. thank you, thank you. You're welcome. So yes, uh, so warp drive is one way. Let's go back to the one that you talked about earlier, which was uh, the wormhole because wormholes have been around for the idea has been around for a while and it's been something that has been more uh believable than you know up until recently with the warp drive to, yeah yeah so uh what what's the idea of a wormhole who wants to explain that one well it's an asshole on a worm <laughs> okay so you don't want me explaining you, you gotta go or i'm gonna go there and all i right. went there uh all right Basically, a wormhole is where you take one part of space, you fold space to another part of space, and those two parts are connected, and that's your wormhole. If only we had a pizza. But that's... We only had a pizza. <laughs> yeah, we could show that. Oh, you know, when I was a kid, I used to show uh, other people the idea of the wormhole, because, uh, you know, I was the nerdy kid who was into this type of stuff. I, I, draw, a I, dr I draw a on a paper, uh, like a squiggly line, and I'd say, see, this paper is space. 
And if you fold it, then you can connect point A and point B closer together. You don't have to go on the squiggly part. Yeah, that's 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 about it. But of course, creating a wormhole uh, is incredibly difficult. We'd have to probably find one naturally. But uh, I don't know. Is, is there ideas for creating uh, artificial wormholes? There are, but uh, the problem is once again the you amount need, of power it you would need take. Artificial worms. <laughs> yeah, artificial yeah, worms could do it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, well, both of these issues deal with warping space in some way in a different um, way yeah actually that's the, a good point it, and that's important to the mass idea because I, I think that you still need to accrue a lot of mass to get this done because the more mass you have the more gravity right. is exerted and the gravity warps i know we itself. kind of moved on but that's why i like the warp idea better is because mm -hmm. you could have a small area around your small ship and you warp space just right there yeah. So that's why it's a better choice and now if you're, that we know. Well, yeah, wormholes would be almost impossible. Oh, well, not impossible. But well, the thing difficult. is, is that it depends. Like stargates. Stargates are wormholes, also. <clears throat> Sorry. You mean in the fictional? Stargate right in the fictional. Right. And the thing is, is that with stargates, what they would say is that once you get it open, it's it's not like you see in the. Stargate movies and the Stargate TV show where they fly through this big wormhole type thing. It basically, it's just a window and you step right through to wherever it is. Yeah. There's none of this. There's uh, no LSD special. Right, exactly. Between. So wait, wait, wait. Is, there, is a Stargate something that's real or fictional? Fictional. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're mixing together the real and the fictional like a Greek salad here. Yeah, we, gotta, we are. We got to say, I think. But we, we're giving our audience credit that they're smart enough to disseminate which is which. But I'm not getting it, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, neither am I, but hey, I'm just sitting here. So, so, wait, wait, wait. No, Greek salad is a... Oh, but, no, no, I know what Greek okay. salad is. Okay. This, actually, what is Greek salad? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm sure... I'm just, I don't even know what the hell you Greek know, salad is. It may is. not even mix together. Your metaphor may be null and void. Hey, really? it'll be in the show notes. If you would have said salad bowl, now then I would have understood. <laughs> there you go. Have they explained that to you yet? Yes, I they did. did. Okay. I do, yeah. I do understand yeah. now. Okay, and the audience <laughs> noticed it. <laughs> All right, so what were we talking about? Okay, so what I wanted to ask then is Stargates, you said in the show, they're, they're, you're, you're going through the special effect thing, but then you said, no, but really, you'd go straight through them. No, it's, it's the thing is just that you have two parts of space, yeah. and you connect them so that those two parts are like a door now. So that's and a wormhole. Okay, that's a wormhole. Okay, so wormhole you just is walk like that. Through. A stargate is a wormhole. Now, some people say there's going to be an event horizon. Good. You have to walk through goo well, if, to get to the other side like in the show. But It's exactly the idea if you've played the game Portal. Yeah. You've got that gun yeah. where you mm -hmm. throw a, you a blue and a red, and it's just a portal from you know in one out the other. And that's much more... Feasible if we can get one open. The yeah, problem is keeping it open. My idea of that was always for Narnia. You know, the the, the doorway to Narnia would always ah. be like that. It would be you'd go straight in there. And it's funny yeah. because that's a whole fantasy concept of having a doorway to another world, but it's mm -hmm. a, really a wormhole. I mean, if you think about it, just be yeah. directly there, right? Because it's folding true. space directly on top of itself, and uh, that leads us. But into theoretically, it. they would be very unstable. Like they would appear and disappear. In fact, there's. Um, there's some parts of quantum theory that say that wormhole tunneling happens on the quantum scale uh, in a vacuum almost constantly, mm. but it's so small that it has very little effect on. Isn't that what they say that electrons are popping in and out of existence? Yeah, 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 yeah. and you know, uh, I I believe that there's oh, worm. Well, I know wormholes are just a theory. There's possibly there is no full size wormhole like we see in science fiction. Mm -hmm. You know, they may not exist at all, or at least for not long enough for us to even see. So it, it almost comes down to the idea of a warp drive. We would have to harness the power mm -hmm. uh, that nature has to create these little mini quick wormholes and like maybe expand them. The power of wormhole. <laughs> <laughs> By the power of wormhole, this sounds wow. like a porn. You know, it doesn't shock me that Prince Adam would he say such a thing. I am Prince Adam. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, yeah. I never can get past Cringer. 
Why in the hell is there a cringer? You know, that's just that's just wrong. Prince of Eternia, oh guardian of the secrets of Castle Wormhole. And he's got a giant. <laughs> he's got a giant green cat. You know, it's funny. Yeah. The word wormhole by itself is used in science enough that it doesn't sound disgusting. But when you put it with anything else, it sounds disgusting. Okay, you like know let's how, go like, to Castle Wormhole. That's you know, like, like, you know I don't how, want to go to Castle Wormhole. Actually, Castle Wormhole, you go into it, but you wind up somewhere else. So no, but it doesn't sound like that. It doesn't sound scientific. It sounds like right. some porn like dungeon place. Okay, like, now do you agree with me that? The whole thing about Cringer's secret identity as Battle Cat is like one of the lamest disguises ever. <laughs> yeah, Put a freaking no saddle on him, and now he's Battle Cat. Hey, he's and no bigger. one recognizes he's it. Bigger? Right? Well, what about Prince Adam and oh, He Man? They look the exactly toys, the, toys the not same. Bigger. Prince Adam and He Man look exactly the same. It's just he's yeah, got but his he shirt strips off. down though. You know. <laughs> uh, but we have to re- we have to remember even Ricky Ricardo couldn't recognize his wife in a fake mustache. That's true. Hey, hmm. but nobody you know, can recognize uh, Superman you, ever. Yeah, so. that's true. But you know. But you know what it was? It was the voice. Because Prince Adam, Prince Adam talked like this. And yeah. hey man, talk like Yeah, and her. Zorro never did that kind of thing. <laughs> or I'm that man. <laughs> so, uh, why don't, since, we're in fi- since we're talking about fiction anyway, let's bring this over to fiction. Yay. We should. You're talking about Stargate. We should watch Stargate. Oh, yes. wait, we did. Oh, yes. I, I, saw, I actually didn't watch it. When it came it. out in the theater. Sorry, it's been yeah. a busy week. I, yeah, I saw the preview. Uh, no, I, I didn't like Oh, it. by the way, Paul is here in spirit. Yeah, uh, yes. he wanted to be here for the speed of light, but he's not here. He wanted to remind everybody that the Millennium Falcon does, in fact, go 0.5 past the speed of light. She can make 0.5 past the speed yes. of light. Yes, that's kind of like the space version of the driving Kessel 55. Run. <laughs> you know, no, no, no. Han can make the Kessel run in something parsecs. Yeah, 12, 12 parsecs. parsecs yes, right. Yeah, so Which is a measurement of, of distance, of distance but that's the, there's, there's. But then a, again, if they're warping space. Yeah. Then it's like the Kessel run. Well, you know? no, the, the Kessel one run like you measure how you is a wormhole. Like, no, 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 like no. How many the Kessel wormhole. Travel, if Paul right? was here, he could what? explain this because I don't know it exactly. But what? it's about how quickly you can get through the the Kessel run. Okay. That's well, I mean that was added afterwards, obviously, because it was right. done incorrectly. That was another. But in the in the genre right. in the uh, cat the, what's it called cad cad canon canon cad yeah. In the canon, it officially means the Kessel the Kessel run is there's different ways you can get through it. And he's uh, found the fastest way to get through it. So but he then can, that doesn't say anything about his ship. That's his That's his maneuvering skill, his navigation. Mm, good point. So how does that make the Falcon Well, maybe, maybe the ship... How do we get back on Star Wars? Because you wanted to mention Paul being here in spirit. It's Paul's yeah. Paul. He is haunting us! <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I gotta be on her. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Okay, uh, so... <laughs> it's fine that he... So, um, oh, we, yeah. we watched, at some point in our life, uh, <laughs> Stargate. Uh, Open Kale, night, man. Actually, I went to see Star... Regrettably. I went to see Stargate with Daryl and uh, and other friend Eddie, and I thought it was okay, and they came out just like, Oh, this dude sucks, up, blah, 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 blah. And still I, hate it. Yeah, and they still. <laughs> I think you it's okay. It once. You saw it once. I uh, think it's okay. It. And you Kale know? likes it a lot. They had okay. Their vast alien army had two freaking fighter ships. I mean, seriously, three. Three. Oh my god, remember, it's a battalion. It was because remember, <laughs> one of them got destroyed, so they yeah. had two more. Yeah, and they got shot down by people hiding behind wheelbarrows. Oh my god, they destroyed a third of their army. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Army's air force. <laughs> they. They well, there's used, no back on that chair. I know, I leaned back on a chair that has no back, I almost fell. <laughs> they used the Iraqi Air Force as a model for their... <laughs> but the, re- <laughs> the reason no, we brought kidding. it up is because, of course, the whole idea, at the basis of Star- Stargate is a uh, Stargate, which happens yeah. to be a wormhole. Yeah. Uh, and Artificially so, created Artificially wormholes. created, right. So, uh, in the movie, if I remember correctly, it was... Uh, they found it, right? They found the Stargate system. Yeah, mm-hmm. they didn't know it was a system then, but uh, they found a buried Stargate, and then they figured out how to start it up. Yeah, because they had to decipher the runes on right. it. Right. And they and used the, it. They used the Captain Crunch decoder. Good old James Spayer. Out. Why didn't they just get MacGyver from the TV show to come and figure it out beforehand? Before they had to get him. From yeah, the they could have given him. Have Kurt Russell do it first. Oh, did Kurt Russell? Oh, that, that, did Kurt Russell that become MacGyver? Me. Was it the same character? Yeah. Oh, okay. Same character. That reminds me. Did any of you ever notice the the coincidences between the uh, Atlantis yes. Disney Atlantis? I was going to bring that up when I saw Atlantis. I was yeah, the same thing. True. I was like, "That was Stargate underwater." What the? Yeah. It's, yeah like, exactly. It was so similar. It, it was. was like, does yep. the guy look the same? It was and Stargate anime. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So yeah, so Stargate, uh, I mean, we're not going to find a wormhole buried. <laughs> it's not so wrong. We're not going to find... <laughs> If we We're dig, to dig our own. If we dig deep enough, we'll because find we'll find a wormhole. <laughs> Jesus, we have to dig our own wormholes. <laughs> well, why don't okay? Why don't we talk about other fictional accounts of either warps or wormholes or things like that's that? That's a good. Well, idea. the thing is, is that well, but let's briefly touch on something that's right. probably going to pop up. Let's which touch is the wormhole. <laughs> let's touch the wormhole and see what pops up. Right, <laughs> hyperspace. Oh my gosh. Oh. Wow, <laughs> hyperspace is at least likely. Oh, I like hyperspace. Uh, hyperspace is like the, in my opinion, that's the give up. It needs to be medicated. Yeah, it's like that's you give up, and that's what that's how you get from here to there because it's hyperspace. You mean that that's like the cop out explanation? It is. Okay. It is. But I mean, what is hyperspace technically supposed to be? Well, let me tell you about this little book called Flatland. No, well, yeah. Well, no, I mean, seriously, though, it, no, would, it would deal with the fourth dimension, right? Yeah, no, that's Price. exactly what it Hyperdimensional be. travel. Go ahead. Okay, that so the idea travel. behind hyperspace is the is that there is a, we'll just say, forgetting that time may or may not be the fourth dimension. Let's just that's say. N, N, N dimension. N dimension, yeah. Another dimension. But let's yeah. say we have three dimensions that we can perceive, which is uh, length, width, and depth. So basically, uh, with our eyes, we can see left to right and up and down. And with our 3D imaging with our eyes, that's not quite we what it's infer called. We infer And using depth our section. brains and our other senses, we're able to infer the third dimension of depth. But I can't see three-dimensionally or else looking at Kale right now, I can see the back of his head. Because you're which not I Daredevil. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. No clicking. Yes. <laughs> we can hear auditorial three-dimensionally. Right. Um, so the idea is that, well, uh, in the book Flatland, they said, well, what if, uh, what if there was a world that wasn't three-dimensional? What if it was two-dimensional? And there was this, uh, these shapes all lived on this two-dimensional uh, plane, and they're just living their lives, and all they see when they look around is lines, and then one day the sphere comes in, you know, above this two-dimensional plane, above this paper, and dips itself into the paper. Now, all the, the shapes see, or the main character A square sees, is a circle. But the circle is trying to say, hey, I'm not a circle. I'm three dimensions. And A square goes, but <laughs> there's no such thing. Uh, there's two dimensions. Well, to think about it as a sphere passes through a two dimensional plane, mm -hmm. first of all, it could pop into reality. It would anywhere. just suddenly be so there. It's like a ghost. Right, right? exactly. And then also, um, it would start out as a point, grow to a bigger circle, and then shrink to a smaller point again as it passes through that plane. And that's what we would see if we were in a two-dimensional sphere. Right. Or, I'm sorry, two-dimensional sphere. Two-dimensional plane. And uh, we might think it's a ghost or something else like that. Anyway, basically the, the, the idea of the ghost story the is what if we are really in the third dimension, like they're in A squares in the two dimensions, and we're going, <laughs> there's three dimensions, there's no fourth dimension. But maybe like when ghosts or aliens or whatever pop up in front of us, they're really just stepping into our dimension from the fourth dimension. And a hypersphere passing through the third dimension exactly. would start out as a point yes. and be a sphere that grows in mm -hmm. size and then shrinks back down to a point again. And because our experience is only in the three dimensions, even though mathematically you could picture a fourth dimensional object, like a, a hyper, hyper object, cube? like a hypercube, right. you or can picture it with mathematics. You cannot really picture it in three dimensions because we don't we cannot perceive a fourth dimensional objects in the per dimensions we see so let's say um i don't think hyperspace is as big of a cop-out as you're kind of claiming it is kale because i look at it this way okay if you if you do a space fold or warp um you're going to manually take if you imagine our universe as being a plane you're going to take and fold it onto itself so you can jump from one place to another but I think the idea of hyperspace would be that what if our third dimension is mapped on the surface of a hypersphere? And you can take okay. a shortcut to go all the way across the universe by traveling through the interior of the sphere, and that would be hyperspace. You travel through a different dimension. So it's like you're connected everywhere at once. Because taking a straight line instead of the arc all right. in three dimensions. I, can I, think, see what I, you're think, I think we might distance. have a semantics thing going on here. What is your idea of hyperspace? Was it kind of like what we're saying? Because I think no. Because yeah, because worm wormholes and uh, and what's the other thing we're talking about? Warp drive. A lot of that has to do. Yeah. You have to have hyperspace in order for that stuff to happen because it it takes mm -hmm. space and makes it. Well, it needs to be within right. space right. time. It, it needs does, to be space needs to be inside of something else. You have else. to fold space. You have to fold space. Of or, yeah, inside of hyperspace. Correct. You need to yeah. warp it inside. Right. So, but and what were you saying? I was thinking that hyperspace is basically like a place that the rules don't apply and you can go into yeah. it and go super fast okay 
It's uh, kind of you're thinking of it as being a mental shortcut to Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the way I think of hyperspace. Okay. It's like you go in there and all of a sudden, oh, now I've we also can go heard it, 20 million I've also heard it explained speed, you know? though that, you know, if you can't fold space yourself, maybe space is already right. curved. Okay, I didn't realize this shortcut. until he said it, but that's right. In all the old science fiction movies, right. hyperspeed, hyperspace was kind of like the light speed thing. See, I wasn't even looking into that way cuz that's I knew, used to, when I was a kid, think of it like that, but right. I'm so into the 34th dimension. When you said hyperspace, the first thing I thought was the scientific I, idea right. of, like, the hypercube. Well, we're, t- we're talking about that, too, so... Yeah, well, kind totally of. I think, I, think, I think your idea of hyperspace is that you're saying it's the same thing, but it's a science fiction view of it, which is just what you said. You go into hyperspace, you're, like, all-powerful. You can go anywhere, do anything. And uh, But in, in reality, hyperspace is the space that, if it exists, holds our three dimensions... Together. Well, there are what there or is outside of eighteen or so. Yeah, uh, that where are eleven. I think. Where Fairly the fourth well dimension or the n dimension, nth mm. dimension, touches every other part of the th- three dimensions, so you can wow. travel anywhere. Fairly dimensions. Wait, does that mean in 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 that dimension, all of our penises are touching right now? Oh, Unfortunately, yes. Let's move on. Don't so, touch me. So uh, we were talking. Oh, Target. Me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Daryl, I'm just bringing uh, it down. This went, this he's trying off the rails. So he's like, trying to have a respectable podcast, and I just, I just <laughs> brought. I'm, oh, I'm just stop. can't do it. All right, so where are we going? Way to go, go, Joey. Way to go, dude. How did you do that with your mouth closed? <laughs> he's, he's frozen again. <laughs> oh you gosh. guys can't see this out there, but Booger's picture is frozen, and he just <laughs> looks. At, he's got this long off look, like. Oh. Yeah, that's like kind it's of like how dreaming of his next cup of tea. That's yeah. how I imagine he feels about our podcast so far. Yeah, he looks kind of eh. Yeah. So oh, look, porn. <laughs> <laughs> we will put the picture of Booger up. Can we freeze that? Is there any way I to get that picture? Don't think I can save it. Oh, uh, let me take a picture. Of it. Hold on. Yeah, I'm take porn. a photo. That would work. And you guys can take a look at this and be like, ha ha. It looks like he's daydreaming. All right, well, enough about that. Actually, uh, Burger, you've been pretty silent about this, our quiet friend from the north. Turn on my what do you back. think? Do you have any... I think Diet Dr. Pepper tastes like more, more like regular Dr. Pepper. No, I, I knew it! I've been, I'm mostly listen, I've been listening more to what you guys have been saying because it's, it's a lot of what's out of my scope and realm. Unfortunately, I'm nowhere near as educated on this, this topic as uh, you three gentlemen are. What realm is that, Burger? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if oh. you well, then let me ask you a question. Did you see Stargate? Yeah, that's how I knew there was a tie between it and and uh, Atlantis. Tell us what you thought about Stargate. It's been a while since I've seen it, well, but I, I remember just made enjoying. Something up then. I'm trying to, but you keep interrupting me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I remember enjoying the hell out of it. I remember, I remember liking what I saw. I remember this, recognizing the Egyptian ties to it and thinking about some of the crap that my family used to talk about with uh, some, some members of my mother's side of the family used to believe that a lot of the, um, the secrets of Egyptian history were involved with aliens. They actually truly believed it. I, you know, a bunch of nonsense to me, but... Um, the ancient, I remember ancient aliens theory. Yeah, did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Like, where, where, yeah. where Luke's speeder is on one of the walls of the Egyptian. Uh, or uh, I got a picture of, of that. It's hilarious. Wasn't that the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah that Chariots was one. of God. Well, there there are some hieroglyphs that look suspiciously like helicopters and whatnot, but you know yeah. that's pareidolia but those, again. That's from our minds that sees um, yeah. the Mother Mary and a piece of toast too. Yeah, so. yeah well, the one. The, <laughs> <laughs> the one that had the speeder, the Star Wars speeder for on an Egyptian wall, it was real one, but it was like three pictures that had been laid on top of each other. Uh, so it wasn't okay. even, they, they had proved it was like at three different moments in time. Someone like graffitied over it and then someone did uh, something else. And so it just ended up looking like the speeder from Star Wars. Cool. Cool. But that's yeah. not aliens because that would no. be weird. No. So so even, so even you like the movie because you had connections where you had family members who were saying, ancient aliens. I- I wouldn't say that I liked it because of that. I liked it just because I thought it was it was a good popcorn movie. Uh, you know, there was enough to spend maybe five, six bucks at it and, and whatnot, but nothing That's I would go raving to all my friends saying, you must watch this, it's wonderful. Speaking of popcorn, your voice sounds very popcorn-y. Um, didn't this happen last week and we you said, oh, it's because I'm doing this? Something with a microphone or something? Or you put something somewhere? Because it's no. like... The, where did, no. Someone's... 
Someone's just getting a bad internet connection. That's what the popping is from. For sure we did this. So. Okay. Okay, well. Yeah. We reset our routers and stuff, but that's the best we could get. Sorry out well, there, I folks. Think, I think the... Le- oh. He thinks the... Uh, <laughs> apparently. So. And he freezes on that yeah. thought. Oh, uh, it's like... No, I, I didn't want to interrupt you guys. I uh, think that the last time that happened was because I was, I was messing with the microphone. I'm not touching it this time, so I don't know. Uh, okay. Good. Keep your fingers off the microphone while we're doing this. One of the things... <laughs> is- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One of the things that we uh, need to talk about is also is is the speed of light really a barrier? Yeah, I mean, can we go fast? We have well, because there's a history repeating itself where the speed of sound was thought to be insurmountable, yeah. and then uh, of course we've exceeded it. And of course, times. you know, and it is still a theory. We were calling it a law earlier, but the law is based on a theory, so it's not really a law. Yeah. And but science can change, so. but it, but. What we know about it has been true thus far. I have far, a feeling, so. yeah, but I have a feeling that the answer to that is going to lie in uh, the when we find out how to connect uh, regular physics to entanglement. No, subatomic. <laughs> not enta- it's not always entanglement. All right, I don't. It, I know, forget lots of words, not just entanglement. Speaking of, <laughs> but that like, was a good move. Stargate. One of the things I got my little like science sensors going off back whoop, when we first saw whoop. it was the moment that they send that uh, little probe through the Stargate. Oh. And on their map, they're tracking as it's going across the universe. I'm like, okay, so that signal is instantly coming back from yeah. the probe. <laughs> yeah, like, now, the now, if the wormhole were still open, I get that. Because oh, yeah. it could be transmitting through that. But that was one but of my first shuts off. pet peeves with it. Well, that, yeah. if you, that's one of the things is that when it shuts off, the telemetry stops coming back. Yeah. So... That could have been that could have been also a quantum entanglement thing where yeah you know but but still I, I thought that was cheesy you know it's See, very, it was entanglement no now what I don't remember what I was trying to say it was <laughs> I love doing that to you what was it dude you totally <laughs> <laughs> well, well well Joe Joey you you think about that Kale you brought up a, you said something that actually struck a chord with me you said well you know science can change are you sure it's science that changes or our understanding of what science was changes Boom! You got served. No, you didn't. What? <laughs> anyway, yes, I agree with you that it uh, science, the method of science doesn't change, but our understanding does change. Okay. Yeah, so I agree with you on that. I think it's both um, because, I mean, what's actually out there in the world should be a constant, so far as we know, but our understanding of those cons constants gets closer and closer to the truth over time through experimentation and better and understanding repeated yeah. trials and, and all closer. That. so we and we closer. don't necessarily change the rules of the universe we understand right. them better over time yeah exactly so, so the science itself uh, excuse me the fact itself stays constant it's yeah. our perception of it that changes to to it finally matches hey. the, the same constant and there's one thing i'll say about the idea of maybe um the speed of light not being uh surmountable is uh i mean of course there are the shortcuts like wormholes and and warp drive and whatnot but um as far as it being a a concrete wall that just matter can't go faster than the speed of light um i think one thing that i can say about how maybe it was short-sighted for people to predict that the speed barrier would never be passed is that before um, the speed barrier was broken, the concept of a sonic boom wasn't necessarily known. But there were examples of sonic booms in reality mm-hmm. that existed before that because of the cracking of a whip well, and is maybe the tip of it breaking the sound The barrier. sonic boom might be is that the electrons popping in and out of existence, maybe what's happening is they're going faster than the speed of light. So we can't but measure it's, them. But it's... it's we don't need that elaborate explanation, though, because it's explainable by the vacuum that's behind the... Well, it's super compression of the air um, in front of the object moving faster than the speed of sound, as well as a vacuum behind it. So the air filling in that vacuum makes the pop. Right, right. But right, it, so right. It's, we don't I'm talking about... No, I'm talking about the to, electrons popping in and out of existence. Right. The electrons going maybe faster it's an electron than... Oh, the maybe light. those... How are doing right. That's what I was saying. Oh, Got it. Okay. okay, which reminds you what I was saying. Regular physics versus atomic physics. Quantum. Quantum physics. That's the word I was looking for. When, when we make that connection and find out how they connect together, I think what's probably going to end up happening is we're going to see... Entanglement? 
if that's part of it, yeah. <laughs> and we're going to probably see that there is a way to go beyond the speed of light. Because for me, the idea that there's this barrier around the speed of light, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to fit. There's got to be a reason why it has that barrier. And there was that thing at CERN where they thought they were detecting particles moving faster than the speed right, of light. Right, yes. However... I mean, that was interesting. Um, it was a good way of seeing how science is often reported because the um, people working on it, when they issued their papers, they basically said, this looks interesting, but we definitely need more testing to tell what's going on here or right. if we just screwed up. And yeah. they were very explicit about that in their papers, but almost everybody uh, in the right. media went and said, time travel or uh, you know, speed of light exceeded or did they exceed the speed of light? And it was very sensationalized. But the reality of the story was that this was a very preliminary finding, and the scientists that made it knew it would shake the foundations of a lot of quantum theory as we know it. So they basically were saying, you know, we have to repeat this, we have to get other people to repeat it and have the same findings before we say that something traveled faster than the speed of light. So they were very careful and cautious about what they were reporting which is proper for scientific method. Yeah. But the way it was portrayed in the media was something else entirely. And they did eventually find out that it was an equipment problem because when you start measuring things that fast, any little hang up, uh, some of the signaling in their measuring devices was suffering a delay um, or they overcompensated for the delay. It was something along those lines. Hmm. So basically they were counting things as arriving before they did and it had to do with the sensing equipment so they corrected themselves they replaced some of their gear and then they found out these things were actually traveling at the speed of light not faster and you know bringing up the whole idea of the scientific uh method and and science papers and making sure you have something to back up your theory i have a theory that has none of that i thought i'd bring that up so okay just uh, sit back and get comfortable um so i believe that it's very possible that as you know everything is moving away from itself uh in the universe because expansion of, of the yeah, expansion universe. because of the big yeah. bang well what if it's not just individual objects what if it's every atom is moving away from itself and if that hey, was that's true my theory of gravity I think you came up with it after I came up with this idea. Oh, all right. Because I've had this one for a while. We've talked about it. Everything is moving away from each other <laughs> at the speed of light. And if we were all, every part of our body, our atoms and everything, was moving away from each other at the speed of light, we wouldn't notice it. But if we tried to go faster than the speed of light, we couldn't because we couldn't outpace ourselves. Oh! But maybe I got it out of actually your theory of gravity backwards. I don't know. One of us came up with that. When, yeah. when, it, when it's the truth, we'll both take credit. We'll both take credit yeah, for good. it. You do the gravity part, I'll do the light part. All right. Me. That sounds good. What As do you think, Daryl? the drain. I'm thinking that if there was expansion based like that, that there, whatever the uh, central point of reference is, if you're not in the center, you're, you'd basically be arcing. Mm. Like, you know, we would not just be expanding in all directions, but we would be forming a curve as we're... Well, and maybe, but that's it. Particles maybe we are. are. Maybe we're no. coming in together at the same speed. We're all, just like a black hole, everything is contracting in at the same speed. That's right. right. Of, that was your thing. Was your, you right. think it's coming in. I say it's going out. And that I was say it. it's coming that's, in. That's, and that's we talked why about we don't it, yeah. notice. Yeah, we don't notice because it's all happening at the same but time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we have no way to back in. Any of no, that. No, it's just our all. imagination. Oh, there's just something. Some maybe I'm wrong about it, but it just seems like if you have Running this one away. point where that's happening, that just it's not an even distribution of, of matter because you want, you will wind up warping. It. Your dimensions will change. As well, that's the thing is we, we have black holes and yeah. we have large masses. And so... Well, maybe we but then black they holes do eventually get though. to that point. Well, maybe we wouldn't. The thing is also matter gets extruded approaching a black hole because of the acceleration of, of gravitational pull. True, so, but that that, would, that is a force that gets greater than the force that's pulling it in at that point. Yeah, because once it gets past the event horizon, it's not coming back. All right, out. so this is a challenge to the listeners at home. Uh, there's something about that not working in my mind. So do you agree more with Joey and Kale that maybe, you know, things are collapsing or expanding, expanding or is it He's one of those things where expanding. we would definitely <laughs> see, would, would we see things warping if that were happening? I don't know. Well, uh, here's my thought. Maybe, work for me. Here, here's my thought on that. Maybe we are warping, but 
our proximity is so close to our, each other that we don't notice the imperceptible warping. If we could see... Well, some, yeah, the, I guess that would be a slow expansion, but yeah. then over time, our whole Earth would be, instead of um, our spheroid, it would start, uh, you know, the, the poles would move to one side or well, another. Well, maybe it's happening kind of at such a slow pace that it's not noticeable. Yeah. Then it would and be, because of then the be small, small space. Too. Who knows? You know what would be cool? If we, if we could have a segment before we started talking about our main topic, and you could challenge us on that. That would be kind of cool. That would be awesome. I'd, I'd like that. Maybe, maybe <laughs> yeah. we'll do that in the future. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe so. That, since we don't get viewer mail correcting is us, we could try to preempt That's it. still the same expression, isn't it? No, I think he just looks like that. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> oh, he just moved his eyes. Okay. <laughs> it's half asleep booger. I, th I thought you were frozen again. I'm um, always frozen. <laughs> in North Dakota. In North Dakota. Carolina. So let's go. Jeez, I can't even get the state right. So okay, so possibly faster than light speed is possible. <laughs> possibly. Well, well, but so what about other fictional? Yeah, that's what we're going to go next. So awesome. Anything else we want to say about faster than light speed? I mean, Star Wars. Since we're going to that anyway, they're just like four five best speed light. Oh, check me out. I'm going to light speed. No, no physics. And all those. Civilizations and planets must be pretty close together. If it's yeah, like they're only going like point five past the speed right. of light. Yeah, we're gonna go to Dagobah. That's you know, well, wait, five hours a, away. Well, wait, wait, like, it's a long time ago. Maybe it was like right after the Big Bang, and everything's no, just true. really close together. Wow, that's right. It was a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Wow, right. far, far away from where we are now. Right, because it's near the center of the universe where the big. There you go. You know, it does, you know, it doesn't work about that though. What, Daryl? Is that you wouldn't have heavy metals by that point. Because you have to have ah. stars collapse in order to form the That's you know, higher elements. That's very true. Yeah. You are, you are correct, And sir. there would be too much heat. That would be one very hot universe. You're correct, sir, yes. All right, yeah. thank you. That's good. Thank you for dashing hey. my hopes and dreams. <laughs> but maybe that's what dark matter and dark energy is, is that that's the rest of the uh, post-faster-than-light-travel universe. And we haven't made it that far yet. <laughs> and because of that... I was trying to bitch slap. <laughs> because of that... They don't let us in on that. That's the ninety-five percent of the universe. Everybody has out there is traveling around, going faster than the speed of light, and we're just stuck in the backwater. Honestly, that whole I I agree that whole dark matter thing where where they say, well, it's dark matter or dark energy. I I, I see us at a point in, where we're gonna look back and go like the ether, you know, yeah. go back like well, oh yeah. the ether, you know. It's probably just the rest of the universe we just can't perceive. You know, it's not a thing. It's everything else. Well, that we're like, not ready to join the club yet. Yeah. There are a couple ways that could go. <laughs> go that, for it, Daryl. Okay, that would mean that there actually is some some energy and matter out there that we can't detect, or our um, theories of how uh, large bodies should move are wrong. No, I think the first one. I think there's, it's all out there. We just can't detect it. It's like beyond the spectrum. But I mean, there's also the possibility that the reason why we believe that there's dark matter and dark energy is that the heavenly bodies aren't moving in a way that we expect them to because given we're their missing mass. something. So our formulas could just be Which off. Which could uh, very much have to do with the connection That's between. That's true. So, our, so you know, it might be one of those things where one day we discover, you know, the proper equation for it and we rework all the figures and we go oh there's no need for dark matter or dark energy anymore yeah but yeah. what about that new telescope they've sent out the dark matter uh telescope i can't remember the name of it at the I moment know, but it sounds like it was sent out by a doc like an evil scientist or something <laughs> i have sent out the dark matter telescope and the world will be mine <laughs> i don't know it's the telescope of the Sith. I keep seeing when when he says that, I see that big ball coming down and hitting Doctor Evil in the balls. That's what I. Anyway, on, on New Year's, on New Year's, uh, never mind. No, it's not that ball. No, not okay. that ball. Not the Dave Clark ball. No, no. Okay. Who's Dave Clark? Dave Clark was a was the leader of the Dave Dave Clark Five at Oldies. <laughs> Thank you, literal booger. Yeah, there you go. I like that. So, awesome. but I I agree with you, Daryl. That maybe we're, we've just got it wrong. But I was just recently re reading something well, about. I'm not saying that that's the explanation. I just no, want to say that that's one of the one possible of the possibilities. I understand. Yeah. But when the thing I read recently is is that they were getting better measurements of dark. I think it was dark energy. And so it's making it more look like that it's a real thing hmm. rather than 
a mistake. Okay. Well, so but, I, but I'm sure that'll be in the show notes. But um, I can't think of it at the moment. Well, why are you orbiting yourself there, Joey? I don't know. But here's the here's the thing. He, about, he did this last week too. That's what I do. Now yeah. here's the thing, though, Joey, about why I, I have to disagree a little bit about how dark energy and dark matter are like outside of our universe. Because one of the theories about why we need or you mean outside of our galaxy no i was saying it's outside of our perception of the universe. like we have our um but according to the maps it's within our universe it's in between galaxies right because it it, it the dark matter explains gravitation or uh, the, the way galaxies spin. universe so whatever dark energy we're supposed to account for would be inside of our uh visible universe right, right. but that's what so. i'm saying perhaps it is not uh, perceivable. I'm not saying it's outside the universe. Well, okay. that's why we can't cattle or account for it because Correct. we have no way of detecting it thus Correct. far. And, and that's what's even there. And that's what I'm saying is that is, I think that we only see like five percent of the universe. It's the whole. Uh, yeah, vi- we only use ten percent of our minds, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's the whole visual spectrum, right? We can only see light, and yeah. it's just a small part of the whole yeah, that, electromagnetic that spectrum. And right. this is the same thing. Like our perception of the universe is only this much. And we see planets and yeah. stars, and that's about it. But really, the universe is like a ton of other stuff, and yeah, we totally just have no sense. perception of it, that's except we can sense it through our mathmati- mathematic, math- mathematical, mathematical. Thank you, guys. That stuff. Well, so it could I be, like that it analogy. Could simply that's be really that good, there's, um, good analogy. You know, like dark matter could very well turn out to be um, matter that doesn't interact with our universe except for having gravitational pull. Oh, that's another interesting which would way of looking be, at it, yeah. Which would mean light would pass straight through it. It wouldn't bounce any sort of EMF off of mm-hmm. it. It wouldn't emit uh, Well, then what's dark energy? Or, uh, it could be anything. That's the point. Hmm. It could be anything. Dark energy is poppycock! <laughs> <laughs> I like... I saw that at the 99 cent store today. I almost picked up a few boxes. <laughs> <laughs> they, that's what I'm from Alabama, and that's what Daddy said to call his little peepee. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Jeez! Well, I had to reach for that one. <laughs> but I'm, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. I'm on god. fire this week. Two so points say, for Joey. So let's talk about uh, fictional references of light speed. It's Joey Keys. That boy is on fire. <laughs> that boy's on fire. Oh god. <laughs> I'm going to quit right. this podcast. So, Sorry, I have, to hold, <laughs> I have to hold up for Paul because he's not here. Yeah. Okay, so... so all the singularities. All the singularities. All singularities. Okay, so... <laughs> so, what, let, let's think of some other light speed references in fiction. I mean, we got Star okay. Wars, Star Trek, obviously with the warp may, speed. May I begin? Yes, you may, Daryl. Go! Because I have two examples I'm going to say back to back here. All right, so um, I found it intriguing how uh, Frank Herbert explained uh, oh, space dude. travel in Dune. Um... They don't explain it all that well in the movie, but the book does a pretty awesome job of it. It's one of the things um, that the spice was so valuable for is that it allowed you to get precognition. And basically, the Spacing Guild had these... um, I meant to look it up beforehand. Kale, can you remember what the navigators are called for the Spacing Guild? Uh, Okay, we'll have to look it up. Wow. Yeah, let's not worry about it right now. But uh, basically, to do... um, FTL travel, what would happen is there would be a navigator, and for various reasons, it's basically like they their civilization was um, kind of like a, a civilization where they prevented the singularity from happening, and they outlawed the use of computers. Right. So any sort of heavy computation, computation had to be done by human beings or... By the guild. Yeah. Right. So the spacing guild would use spice and then they would um the way that he illustrated seeing into the future was that you could see they could envision multiple threads of things that will happen or could happen uh basically reaching out ahead of them and basically what they would do is say which one of these threads makes our ship travel the farthest and avoids uh, colliding with some sort of other ship or, or a star or whatever so it's kind of like what they would do is constantly be sh- changing from one possible f- future to another as they just pick which thread they want to follow and that would basically do the faster than light navigation and it's basically by predicting the optimal course somehow yeah. it's kind of a weird D- way D- to think Darryl, 
Yeah, I, I hate to interrupt you, but can you give Joey a donut or something? <laughs> Let's give him a Taurus. A Taurus, yeah. Not a Ford, but a Taurus. The, the, man, the man just keeps making awful gestures with your hands. <laughs> so, um, speaking of... Speaking of Ford, that that leads me to Ford Prefect. Ah, aha, aha. But he's not the character I was going to talk about. But um, I think that in a way, um, Douglas Adams, when he was making um, the idea of the infinite mm. improbability, improbability drive ah, for yeah. faster than light travel in Hitchhiker's Guide, was almost like a <laughs> cheeky version of the Spacing Guild, yeah, um, kind of thing. I could see that because what what his concept of faster than light travel was is let's have a computer calculate how absolutely improbable it would be for our spaceship to disappear and pop up in a different part of the universe. And once you calculate that specific improbability, value, the improbability drive causes it to happen. Right. And in a way, that's almost like someone from the Spacing Guild looking into various threads of the future and deciding, I'm going to choose this path to go down, then this other path. It's almost like they are the improbability drive in the Dune universe. Yeah. But um, huh. but it seems like Douglas Adams took the same similar concept and made it really absurd to make <laughs> it funny. Yeah. And made it very funny. Right. right. Yeah. So how did they get their guilds in Dune anyway? I mean, it was just like one guy's like, I'm the first team member, and now I got a guild. I never was the amount the of prequels. spice they I think the history of it they've the the new books explore more of that kind of stuff yeah, the, the prequels Kevin do. J Anderson writes those with uh, uh -huh. with Frank I've always Sun. wanted to read the series but I haven't I haven't read those either but mm -hmm. my understanding is is that uh, the more spice they that's why they wanted to control the spice was because that way they ate, they ate the majority and they knew what it would do to them mm -hmm. because they wanted more and more of it, like any drug, yeah. and eventually they discovered the precognition and, and what they could do with it. Right, right. But that's... And there's the reason why I said that they were um, a civilization that avoided the singularity is one of the prequel books. And this all the singularities? All the singularities. <laughs> they, they avoided all the singularities. <laughs> all singularities. So they, um, there's a, a war called the but butlerian jihad. <laughs> I thought you were going but, butt liquor. The no. butthole surfers? What the? So, they, so it's almost like a Terminator style kind of setup where there was a massive network and robots and it wound up being a big man versus machine battle. But um, eventually the people won and after that they outlawed all artificial intelligence because they figured it you know once you start down the path of ai you wind up with something that tries to kill all of humanity <laughs> so <laughs> wow well, yeah but in See, our previous discussion weeks. it was we're, we're pretty optimistic that won't happen <laughs> well you are i am <laughs> i am too um, optimistic. i'm not Brian. as optimistic as ray I you think, know what though but think I about am it though optimistic. okay even ray now we're backtracking, but I I have to get this out there because it just dawned on me. Even Ray says that you know the man machine hybrid is the next step in evolution. Well, what's evolution really good at? What's it designed to make you reproduce better at? itself? Reproduce itself, which is an element of. I know what the answer is. I know. Teacher, yeah. teacher, yeah. Joey, extinction. No, no, the opposite of that. Survival. Sex. They want sex. Oh, machines want to have sex with us. Oh, I'm good for that. Oh, sex with machines. <laughs> We're going to have sex with machines. Oh, I want a bot. Beep. Oh, my so, gosh. Um, <laughs> wow. He's Starscream. So, oh, Optimus. Hi. <laughs> you know that those two were doing it. You just had to, you know. There's some problem going on there. What were they, the Roman Empire? Yeah. <laughs> Caligula's. Yeah. Okay, fine. Caligula's all. Oh, everyone's Caligula. Now, back to light speed, or light speed. We can't forget, of course, one of the best portrayals, I think. I didn't, in it, in, I didn't complete my thought, though. Survival. Okay, so if the next stage of evolution is survival, why aren't we afraid of machines trying to outlive us and destroying us? Because, because they, they want to have sex with us. Okay, good answer. Now, Joey. <laughs> How can I follow machine sex? <laughs> I know more how. More machine sex. More. <laughs> oh, that was so funny, I farted. All right. Uh, no, I was going to say, ahead. one of the best portrayals of fictional lightspeed travel had to be, I think, 
ludicrous speed. <laughs> All right, I'm with Booger. I'm sitting this one out. L- ludicrous speed. <laughs> From I Spaceballs. Wasn't, I wasn't on this. Oh, that's Ludicrous right. speed! <laughs> They've gone to plaid. <laughs> They've gone to plaid. <laughs> They've gone to plaid. Yeah. And I think that's this podcast has gone to ludicrous speed! <laughs> <laughs> no, I, thought that was, I thought that was a particular rapper's drug stash. Literature speed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah it was almost yeah. funny, girl. Bad, almost. Bad. Almost. It was. It's just missing something. I'm not sure it what. Is, Maybe. Just, like, yeah, you know all the singularities. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's missing. <laughs> I think we're almost done. Yeah, we got I think about 15 should... seconds until the hour, and uh, that, uh, that's about so, it. So, Booger, do you want to join me in erasing our voices from this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, you might as well leave me in there. That I can right. least pretend I participated. Okay, cool. All right. I just totally sat out on the machine sex part, though. I don't know what that was about. I you always sit out on the we. sex part. We have to, like, I don't even know why you come over. Oh, man, there's not enough lube in the universe for machine <laughs> sex, all right? I'm just saying. <laughs> What's that noise? Oh, it's like it's... there's an earthquake. There's it's, a monster it's... growling. And... The machines are making we noise. Past an hour, so Linda now has to have more ice. Oh, okay, gotcha. So that's the machines making their uprising. That's it, right there. The well, any, any other fiction of uh, time or uh, fast and light and travel um, things? I can't think of any right now. My brain kind of fried out. I think. Well, we could tie this back to time travel, perhaps, because maybe the only way to time travel is to be go the faster than the speed, of, the speed of, light. of light. The theory is, of course, that as you get closer to the speed of light, relative to everything else, your time slows down, and time at, dilation. Yeah, time dilation. And as you hit the speed of light, time. For you stops and everything else which basically means you're every time which is kind of weird if you think about it and then if you go faster than the speed of light time should start to reverse but it comes with all sorts it, of problems like you're going backwards now but you're going forward but you're going the speed of light it, it isn't, isn't that what superman did or was that what um no what, Star Trek did with the whales? No, what superman did was kind of ruin that movie <laughs> <laughs> it was going pretty good until that point and then like you turn the earth to, Bravo, what, what? you know the Richard Donner version of Superman 2 you know how it was supposed to end he does the same thing again really yes he does you gotta be kidding no he does he does the same thing again and it's all like it didn't happen so Jeez. he makes the he makes the earth rotate in reverse which thus turns back time yeah that makes so much sense yeah it's very 1930s comic book <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah all right all right. That was hyperspace right there. Hyper time. Hyper time. Yeah, it's, it's hyper time. <laughs> All right. I, I, I think we're done unless you guys want to. Daryl, as always, is trying to extend this. Do you want to extend us longer? No. All right. Wow, nobody it's laughed at that. To, it's time for you to say you said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Boys and girls of all ages. You're like the Disney ride guy. It's permanent sirs and tacos. Permanent sirs and tacos. and tacos, por favor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to say, because we're already way past <laughs> surf and tacos, so we're going to move on to the end of this. Uh, thank you all for joining us this week. We hope you'll do it again. <laughs> we, but we know you won't. <laughs> so I'd like to say goodbye. Uh, you can always email us. We have our individual emails, or you can contact us uh, at our uh, the contact the show at the show at iamrambling.com. No, it's just show. It's I just mean show. show. Don't show. Say, show at just show, I not just I show. <laughs> it's show at iamrambling.com. Put our names in front. You can get us individually. And uh, I'm Joey Shamel, and that's also where I live, is in IamRambling.com. Where, where do you live, Kale? I'm Kale Anderson, and you can find me at uh, Rom's Rants, blogspot.com. Daryl, what, what about you? Where are you hanging out these days? Oh, you can find me at George.com, G-I-O-R-S. And Booger, where, 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 what rock can I find you under? This week, you can, you can find me at so saith the book of napkinfish.com. Oh, yes, napkinfish. All right, everybody. So you, you talk to him like he's a bacterium. <laughs> well, he is. Well, everybody, all you bacterium out there, I wanted to say so long, and we'll see you at our tenth episode next week. Don't miss it. Yeah, don't count on it. Uh, <laughs> Potato. It's not like they want to not Bye. see it. Mash that. Thanks for listening. You can now stop screaming at the open air. Listeners should put their minds back in their upright positions and resume traditional thinking. 
find us on imrambling.com for access to all of our weekly ramblings, show notes, general discussions, and any projects from Incoherent Ramblings. Like us on Facebook and rate us on iTunes. So long, and thanks for all the fish.